Hey guys, it's Mike. Here's that shirt I was talking about in my UV concepts video. Um, this is what I'm going to be unwrapping for you guys now. Um, it's got a, like it's got more detail than the other stuff that we were working with so far. It's got a, a few more things in the mug. Uh, the mug did have the handle, which was unique, but the the way we're going to approach this is similar to how we kind of a similar type of mindset that we use when we were modeling it. And if you check out the modeling video, you see that before I start modeling it, I kind of lay down my edge loops where I think that they should end up to try to keep that edge flow, you know? And uh, you'll see that when you're UVing, you kind of have to take that same approach, right? So uh, first of all, let me get a fresh set of UVs on here, meaning that we have to project it again. Remember, uh, projecting is kind of like scanning that object, uh, and you can do that numerous ways. You can go in here, create planar. I like going into uh, create planar up here. Whoops, went into uh, what was that? Spherical. That was wacky. Uh, those those can give different results. Uh, Actually, yeah, I'll show you that guy's right. I'm good for that. Like, look at this. Like, you'll see how it's trying to scan that object now, and it's pretty cool. Like, it gets some some neat results. Um, but in the end, you're going to be unfolding it anyways. And I always, whenever I'm UVing, I always think it's better to to start with something that looks closer to the object. And you'll see when I planar map, and I want to map from this direction. And so if you look down in this bottom left, you can see your view axis. You got Y, X, and then Z is going down the, the depths of this. Like it's, it's, we're, we're, we're facing Z axis right now. So if you click that, if you go on the Z axis, then project, you'll see that we get that same type of view. And then now here's here's when we get the thinking going because we gotta break this down into its basic shapes, you know, because we, we we did a cube and a cylinder right in the UV concepts video, and here if you look, look at these faces we got here. These make it, this the body of this shirt. If I deselect this, is kind of just a cylinder shape itself, right? And the reason I chose a shirt is because if you look at your own clothing, you'll see that you have seams down the sides of your shirt. Like you, you probably have a seam right here. You probably have a seam along the edge of your uh, shoulder area and then probably one right here as well that extends into this uh, so like you can see that when they were making your clothes they were running into the same issue because they are but the, it was almost in reverse because they started with a bunch of cloth they started with a huge rectangle of cloth right and then they had to cut the the pattern of the shirt out and then they had to wrap it and then uh, sew it up next to each other you know so you're basically doing the inverse of that and that's why I thought that a shirt would be such a good exercise for you guys um, so I'm gonna go and then uh, think about this in terms of primitive objects like there are, are like these so we know how to unwrap a cube and a cylinder. And uh, so if you look at this, these arms are basically two cylinders coming off from an existing cylinder, right? So what we need to do first is remove those cylinders and get them by themselves. So if we double click our edge, um, and then cut. Let's go into our UV menu. I'm going to move this camera over a little bit. If you go into our UV menu and then cut, you'll see that it makes a clean cut across. 
And then, if you look at your seams on your shirt, you'll see that this seam kind of continues all the way down the side of the shirt. As it depends on which shirt you have. Some might not have it, but the one that I'm wearing right now, it's just your old classic t-shirt, and it has that one. So we're going to double-click that and cut that as well. And we have to do the same for the other side. Uh, you could do both sides at the same time with symmetry, but that's a lesson for when we're modeling the character itself, because that's going to be uh, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of a higher tier uh, tool. Um, but we'll get there. We'll get there, guys. Um, so we have that cylinder basically cut off. If you go into um, UV, UV shell. You'll notice it's on its own shell now because we took those away from the body. So we have this cylinder, this cylinder, and this cylinder. And uh, the problem, you could unwrap it basically, uh, you could unwrap this main object basically as is because if we cut down the sides of it, and down the sides of it here, then if you do. Um, if you go into unfold, where is that? Excuse me. If you go into unfold, you'll see that it spreads it out like that. And if you turn on your checkerboard, you'll be able to see. Like it, it looks pretty good. Um, and that that's definitely viable. Like that can that can definitely work. Uh, but if you look at the, the how the shirt is manufactured, you have that seam, right? And so it just kind of makes sense that we cut along those edges right there. You see, you can select all your faces um, and edges in here as well as in the uh, in your regular viewport. Uh, and once you get used to UV space and like what you're looking at, then it's, it becomes a lot easier and faster to click around in here. But uh, So I'm just going to click those top ones and cut that. So now you can see that they became thick as well. Remember, if you can't see the difference between the thick and thin border edges, uh, you have to go into display polygons and texture border edges. And so we have that in its own UV shell now. Here we go. And now we're going to click our, our UV shells for our sleeves and unfold those. Unfold those. And we go into our U overall UV shells and start scaling those in. Dun, 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 dun. And you just kind of got to start laying these out into our UV space. Remember, UV space only covers from, well, technically it's this entire grid, you know, but the only thing that you're going to get captured is this zero to one value. And these panels, uh, these, these zero to one values, if I click on the, like this panel, if you have something out here, it's going to loop indefinitely. Like it's going to loop to infinity, but it's only going to be that same image. It's not going to be a different image, right? Like uh, zero to one is going to be your Photoshop image, right? And one to two is going to be that same image. It just tiles like that, basically. And uh, that'll be that's that's a little bit more in depth. But for now, since we're just doing one object, you can kind of just keep it on that zero to one. Uh, and you'll notice that we have a lot of empty space again. If you watch uh, the other tutorial, like the UV concepts video, you'll see that there's a lot of empty space on that as well. And it's because we're dealing with these basic objects right now. And we, we cut them up as much as we could. And remember, don't scale. Like I could, I could be like, well, I'm going to get more bang for my buck and just scale these. Don't do that because you're going to get more, if I put on that checkerboard pattern, you're going to get more, like way denser, um, way more dense type of sleeve texture. 
rather than the uh, the body, uh, and that's that's no good. You want to keep it the same resolution because eventually you'll see that like some pixels are like sharper than others. It's like oh man, it's kind of it's kind of whack looking. So we're gonna keep it this size. Uh, unfortunately, we can't use much of this UV space because we don't have more objects to really work with. But that is the basics of laying out the UVs for this shirt and. Uh, Next video is going to show how to color, how to actually put that color on it, and it's going to be great. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing this, and unfortunately, I can't show you the the like state of the art version of it um, in class since uh, it's uh, it's an entirely different program. It's called Substance Painter. That's like the state of the art version of this but uh, if if I get to it I'm gonna hopefully add some tutorials for that as well for anyone that's like I want to go beyond I want to be I want to have skills that are like ready for the industry rather than just our basic this is how you color things but for now our our basic version of coloring stuff is gonna be it's gonna be fully functional so get ready for that and uh, there'll be a link to that on Beach board, and uh, if you can't find it anywhere else, just go to my YouTube again, and it'll be uh, it'll be in there somewhere. But yeah, thanks for watching.